controversy over the sharing economy and how it's impacting traditional companies. We're joined by Michelle Miller, co-founder of uh, Coworker.org. Uh, welcome to the show. Thank you. This is probably one of the most fascinating topics of our time in the last couple of years. I mean, three years ago, we, I could not imagine having this discussion with you. Um, Karina's story about traditional taxi workers not happy, some of the Uber workers maybe not getting benefits. Why does that matter? If, if, if I'm an Uber driver and I agree to this and this is what I want, what's the problem? I mean, I think that for a lot of Uber drivers, part of what you want is that independence and that freedom of being able to access gigs on a platform you know, anytime you need to. But in the context of the fact that the economy is increasingly trending in the direction of more and more jobs going to this sort of platform-based, gig-based economy, by 2020, it's estimated that 50% of the working population will be independent, that we need to really start thinking about how we create economic stability for people that is not rooted in full-time employment. So what you're saying is being a contract employee is great, mm -hmm. right? I, I get an extra, extra money, I, I can come to work when I want, leave when I want, mm -hmm. you have great freedom. But the problem is, is that it's a false sense of security because ultimately a competitor could take you away or you're in a situation where you need the benefits. I need the medical benefits. I need the 401k benefits. I need the retirement benefits. That's where the problem is, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, we made a series of decisions as this country, you know, 70 years ago that the best way to create economic stability for people was to make them part of these shared programs, um, like unemployment insurance, disability, and um, uh, Medicare and Social Security. And you know, we are increasingly seeing more and more people without access to that, yeah. um, and that really destabilizes the overall economy. But now, the the the, the flip side of it, if, if I'm an anchor here, mm -hmm. I get paid by the company, I'm a full-time employee. What if I went to HR and said, I want to be a contract worker because that's what I want to do. I want to deal with all my own taxes. I want to get all the benefits of being self-employed. What's wrong with that? That's my decision, right? There's nothing wrong with that if that's your decision. I mean, the, the problem is that if, you know, when you think about the market where people are um, increasingly having trouble finding, making a choice, right? When you don't have a choice between whether or not you're able to take on a full-time job or do a, a gig job, an independent contractor job, because the economy is really presenting you only one set of choices, that's where it becomes a problem. So you, you're much more worried about the fact that as this sharing economy grows, it's going to limit a lot of choices for a lot of workers. Now look, I've read one article where it says, hey, this is great. But this is essentially eliminating millions and millions and millions of full-time jobs mm -hmm. to create these part-time workers that, yeah, when demand's there, you make money. All of a sudden, when the economy slumps, you've got no work, no jobs, and no security. And this industry has not been through a downturn yet. Yeah, that's absolutely right. And you know, even more You're than that. You're not supposed to agree with me, by oh, the way. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> um, well, you know, but it's it's true. I it's. Uh, <laughs> I mean, the 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 worst part of that is that uh, you know, Uber at any moment when a driver does something they don't like. Uh, let alone whether there's demand or not, they can just delete them off the app. They can just get rid of them with no explanation, yeah. no time. I mean, it is completely unstable work. Um, so are there going to be groups led by people like yourselves mm -hmm. that are going to help a lot of these so-called new entrepreneurs, right? For a lot of Uber drivers, and I've talked to so many of them you know, who are driving, and they love what they do, and there are some complaints, but I would imagine a lot of them are, they're not aware of you know, how, to, how to buy a car. I mean, a lot of things mm -hmm. can become very, very complicated very quickly, right? Who's going to help these people out? I mean, you know, one of the things we do at coworker.org actually is start to create digital networks of employees or workers of any kind who um, can share information um, and, and, and help one another understand the context, the new context in which they're operating. But also, I think that there is a lot of work that needs to be done on a federal level and on a state level to start to think about the actual conditions these workers are facing where they're trying to figure out if a loan is the right thing for them to take on or they're trying to figure out how to do their own taxes or um, and to really start thinking about expanding employment classifications and services to workers through the Department of Labor that help them navigate this new economy. There is some talk of regulation, mm -hmm. and there's a ruling that's coming up. Uh, explain to our audience wh what this ruling is about and why is it so important. So um, <clears throat> there are two cases, one um, brought by drivers against Uber and one brought by drivers against Lyft to actually establish them as full-time employees. Um, and the, the judge in the, in the pretrial case said that um, 
because they are primarily transportation companies, that it, it, it seems as though it's up for debate that these could be established as full-time employees. Um, Uber and Lyft both maintain that they are technology providers, that they are not transportation providers, and that's how they maintain their distance between employees. Um, but both cases are going to trials by juries, and the juries are going to decide. Um, in the Lyft case, the judge thinks that it is a little bit murkier, that they are not quite employees and they are not quite independent contractors. But in Uber's case, it really does appear that it could go in the direction of making them full-time employees. Michelle Miller, um, thank you very much. You have to wonder when our taxi company is going to adopt sort of Uber's strategy and install their own apps. I, I suppose it's probably a matter of time. It's good to see you. Thank you very much thank you. for helping.